everyone welcome back uh, my name is Josephine De Silva and like before we will be studying GCSE O level physics 5054 so we continue the chapter mass weight and density we stopped off at the instruments used to measure weight so next we start with the differences between mass and weight it is a question uh, which sometimes come in your past paper so you need to know the difference especially when you're doing the calculations too okay so mass like we said first is the definition the amount of matter in a body while weight is the pull of the gravity on a body mass is a scalar quantity because it has only magnitude whereas weight has magnitude and direction so it's a vector quantity the si unit is kilograms for mass and newtons for weight then again it is constant regardless of the gravitation field charge so no matter where you are the mass remains the same but the weight varies according to the gravitational field strength. Mass is mainly measure, measured by a beam balance or an electronic balance, whereas weights are usually measured using a spring or a compression balance. Right? Next we have is inertia. Okay. When we talk about inertia, it's a property. Okay. It's a property in which uh, of objects in which they want to remain either in a state of rest. Or of a continuous motion for example there's a table lying here in front of me if I try to push it there's a force acting on me backwards trying to prevent me from pushing the table forward that is inertia that's the property of that table not wanting to change its state of rest similarly if something is moving continuously at a constant speed it will not want to stop all of a sudden for like if you're driving in a car okay all of a sudden uh, you're riding in the car as a passenger and the driver suddenly applies the brakes when you stop your whole body will jerk forward or move forward that is because your body did not want to stop that movement that is the reluctance is the inertia in you fine then you say that inertia depends on the mass that is the larger the mass of an object the more will be its inertia the more will be its resistance to move for example if you have a cupboard and you have a small uh, side table if i try to move the side table which is of a less mass it will be easier to move as you would try to move the cover which has a greater mass there will be more resistance so more inertia in it to move right when you look at the relation we say mass is directly proportional to inertia like i said the more the mass the more the inertia in the object if you look at the example over here you have an elephant and you take the example of a human being so if it is harder for the elephant to change its motion as compared to the person so if an elephant is moving walking fast it will be difficult for it to stop or change its direction but a person will be it'll be easier for the person to change its direction that's why they say um when some animal is chasing you at full speed especially a bigger animal like an elephant what you do is you start running in a zigzag motion the zigzag motion uh, causes confusion for the elephant because he's unable to change his position so fast right so it will give you time to escape right next if you take the example of uh, this van right there's a box on top of the van so when the van is moving there is motion although the box is not moving from its position but it is with the van is moving the box is moving with it but all of a sudden if you stop the van all of a sudden okay what happens is the box will move forward and topple over fall down this is because of the inertia property in it because it's moving it wants to continue moving then it moves downwards obviously because of the pull of gravity right now like i was telling you the example of a person driving all right so uh, what happens is uh, wearing a seat belt is obviously is a very good idea while driving it's it's a safety precaution for the person itself or anyone traveling like see now if the driver is not wearing the seat belt and you suddenly stop the person and move forward hit his head on the glass injure himself but if a person is wearing a seat belt it jerk forward and will be pulled back because of the seat belt now this movement forward even when you're stopping all of a sudden is because of inertia because your your body is moving with the car and it did not want to stop so that jerking moving forward or trying to still move forward is your inertia here. Prevent that you have a seat belt. Security. Precaution. Okay. Next we start with density. Uh, density like it says over here. It's the mass of an object present per unit volume. 
or you can say the mass per unit volume that is you divide the mass of the object with the volume it will give you the density the unit for density the SI unit is kilograms per meter cube okay that's the symbol most often used for density is this symbol which is pronounced as rho but also you can write just write a capital D as well to find density use the formula mass upon volume like here anything for example if you have a object which has a mass of 5 kgs and a volume of 10 centimeter 10 meter cube so to find the density you will do 5 divided by 10 tk and that's your density next to measure density of a substance right we need to determine the mass and the volume so if you have a regular shaped object you need to determine the mass of it you just place it on the beam balance gives you the mass then you find the volume like for example is the volume of a cuboid so for regular shape objects you need to find the volume in a different way for irregular shape objects you find it uh, by water displacement method but the rest of the steps are saying you find the mass of that object then you find the volume and then you find the density by the formula okay but to find the volume the if a regular shape object the volume is found in a different way irregular shape object it is formed in a different way like this okay if you have to measure the volume of a regular shape object for example it's a cube you just use the right formula for it you should know the formulas for the basic uh, basic figures like the cube has a volume length into length and length your cuboid is length into breadth into height your cylinder your sphere whatever so you find the volume there you find the mass which is keeping it on your uh, beam balance then you divide it and you find your density for irregular shape objects what you have to do here is that you have to use your water displacement method like i said earlier water displacement method is like this um you find fill your uh, cylinder with a certain amount of volume that is your initial volume which is given as 20 here right then you tie that object for example a stone or a ball to a thin thread a thin thread i repeat so that it does not vary change the readings of your uh, volume then you slowly lower it into your measuring cylinder and note on the new volume that is your final volume so you subtract the final and the initial will give you the volume of your object which in this case it is 40 minus 20 which is 20 centimeter cube this is when you're using a measuring cylinder you can also find the volume using your eureka can or your displacement can similar method but you use your eureka can is something like this it's a it's a beaker with an outflow spout over here water is filled to the level of the outspot and you have a measuring cylinder kept up so you slowly lower the stone in again tied to a thin thread as you lower it in the volume will rise and it'll flow out of this sorry out of this into your graduated cylinder okay how much volume is displayed in the graduated cylinder gives you your volume of the object and then you put it in your formula and find your density now uh, in cases when the object you're measuring is lighter than water so if you try to use a water displacement method it will not go in so in such cases you tie another small object of known mass and volume to it which is known as a sinker right it's added to it and it's put into your beaker or your measuring cylinder and in the end the volume is subtracted from the sinker also one more precaution you take while doing this displacement method is you measure the mass first then you go to the water displacement method to measure the volume because um, water when in certain objects so water can be absorbed and it might increase the mass so your readings will vary and also other error that occurs while doing these readings is your parallax error right uh, like uh, your what happens is parallax error is when you're not looking at right angles to your reading so for measuring cylinders parallax error can occur as well like here Okay, so you measure the meniscus level meniscus is this shape over here you can have a lower meniscus or an upper meniscus like a curve like this depending on the liquid you're measuring so you keep it at right angles and you measure this like this reading is coming over here when you look from far it's actually looking 35 but it is actually 34 centimeter cube right that's it for now we stop here hope to see you again soon